Hello, Divination, and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to change a gradient background on Hover with Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so right now I'm in the admin dashboard of my website. So the first thing we're going to do is to start by creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new. We're going to give our page a name. So I'm just going to call this gradient background on hover, but you can name your page whatever you want. And then next, I'm going to click here on use Divi Builder. Right, so we have a choice here, a pre-made layout or build, building this from scratch. Or if you have an existing page, this tutorial also applies to that. So just to make things easy and simple, I'm just going to click on build from scratch. And then we're going to set two columns in here in this uh, section. And then I'm just going to close this for now. So the next thing now is to go into my section settings and add some padding. So I'm going to click here on design, spacing, and I'm going to add a padding of 100 pixels to the top and the bottom. So the quickest way to do that is just to activate this chain. And now we've added values both to the top and the bottom. The next step now is to download the images that we're going to need for this tutorial. So I've included the link to the post in the show notes below. So I'm going to come over here to this page, scroll down until we get this opt-in box. So this is where you need to add your email address. I'm just going to enter my email address here. Okay, click on download. And then I'm going to click on this button here to download the files. So now the files have been downloaded onto my computer. Okay, so now that I have my files downloaded, the next thing I'm going to do is to come over here, save this, and then I'm going to save this page and upload those files onto my media library. Okay, so I'm going to exit the Visual Builder for now, come over here, click on Dashboard, and then on Media, I'm just going to click on Add New, and then I'm going to drop my two files in the media library. Okay, so I'm just going to drag them in here, just like that and they're both added. Next, I'm going to come back over here to my pages, click on all pages, and then I'm going to go to the page that I've been working on, click on edit, edit with Divi Builder, and now we're back to where we started. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is to come over here into my row settings, so I'm going to click here on this gear icon. So what we need to do here is to add a background color to column one, so I'm going to come over here, click this plus button, and paste my color like that. Now, if you want to use this, the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post, which has all these colors and all the settings. Okay, so now that we've added our background color, the next thing we're going to do is, is to add a hover color. So I'm going to come back over here, and then I'm just going to click on this arrow. And notice that when I click this arrow, we have this, this extra tab that has just come up, and this is the hover tab. So I'm going to click on that, and then I'm going to add my color. So I'm just going to replace the color that I have in here to that. So now if I flip up, uh, between these two, you notice that these are the hover states. So this is the default. And then on hover, this is the color that's going to show. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is to add our gradient. So I'm going to come over here to the gradient tab, click this plus button, and then we're going to add our first color. So I'm going to click here and our color is going to be a transparent color. So I'm just going to drag the slider down a little bit so we can get our RGBA values. And then between these brackets, I'm going to add my color. Okay, so I'm going to add my second color. And again, my second color is going to be an RGBA value. So I'm going to click here on the second color, drag the slider down, and then paste my colors between the brackets, just like that. Okay, so now we need to uh, adjust our, our gradient type and also the direction. So here it's set to linear, that's fine, but we need to change the gradient direction. So this needs to be set to 50. And then the column start position needs to be set to 20. Okay, so now that we're done with this, the next stage is to add column two background color. So I'm gonna click this plus button and my color here is going to be white. Now it's time to go into the design tab and here we need to set our sizes. So I'm gonna come over here to sizing and set this to full width. Right, so here on use custom width, I'm going to set my unit to pixels. And then on our custom width, we're going to set this to 2000. And then over here on gutter width, I'm going to just click yes, and then set this to one. So the gutter width is the space between the columns. 
So right now you may not be able to see it because we don't have any elements in here, but you will see it once we add all our content. Now let's head over here to spacing and for the top and bottom padding, we're going to set this to zero. So I'll just add my first value and activate the chain. So now that we've added our custom padding of zero pixels to the top and the bottom, the next thing we need to do is to come over here to column two custom padding and add a top and bottom padding of 6VW. So I'm going to activate my chain here so my value can be added both to the top and the bottom. And then over here for the left and right, we're going to set this to 5VW, activate my chain. And then while we're at it, we might as well go in here and add our sizes for our mobile devices. So I'm going to click on this little icon here and then click the tablet tab. So over here, we need to add 120 pixels for the top and bottom padding. So make sure you type it, activate my chain here. And then for the left and right, we're going to set this to 80 pixels, activate my chain. Over here, the, the last thing we're going to do now is to add our size for the phone. And here we're going to add 50 pixels, activate my chain. And then I'm going to go back to my desktop tab. Next, we're going to come over here to our box shadow. And then I'm going to choose my style. So you go with this style here. And then we're going to add our blur strength to 100 pixels. So I'm going to come over here, add 100 pixels. And then over here for the spread strength, we're going to set this to minus 10. And then we're going to head over here to our transitions. And then we're going to click here on advanced transitions. And this needs to be set to 1100 milliseconds. Right, so with that all set, I'm just going to go ahead and save. And then what you need to do now is to add an image to column one. And uh, how I did this is just by adding an image module and then adding our image that we downloaded from the website. Okay, so that's my image right here. And then over here on the uh, background, we need to go to the gradient tab and add these two colors. So the first color here is a transparent color for the first color and then for the second color we just need to add 255 255 2550 so pretty much that's full transparency so once we're done with that the next stage is to uh, make sure your gradient type is set to radial and then you want to uh, add your radial direction to top and then add your end position to 57 percent now let's head over here to the design tab click on spacing and over here we need to add a custom padding of 14 VW to the top. Right, so pretty much that's all we need to do here. I'm going to go ahead now and save. Now over here on the second column, we need to add a text module. So I'm going to click this plus button here, search for my text module, select it. And then I'm just going to type, is your product ready for takeoff? So we need to make sure that this text here is set to heading one. So I'm going to come over here to paragraph, set it to heading one. Now let's head over here and make our customizations to heading one. So I'm going to click here on design, heading text. So now we're on the head, uh, heading one tab, which is great. So for our heading font, we need to use a custom font. And the font I'm going to use here is called Abril Fatface. So I'm going to search for it, select it. Right, so now it's uh, time to change our heading text color. I'm going to set this to black. And then for the text size, we're going to set this to 4VW. So now we can see here it's nice and big. And then uh, what we, we may also want to do is to set our sizes for our tablet and our smartphone. So for the tablet, I'm going to set this to 60 pixels. And for the phone, I'm going to set it to 40 pixels. Okay, back over here to my desktop tab and then save. Next, we're going to add some description text on um, uh, just below this heading. So I'm going to click this plus button, search for my text tab. I mean text module. I'm going to select it. I'm going to replace this with my dummy text. So this is just your description text that I'm just adding over here. Now let's go to our text settings. So I'm going to click here on design text, and then we're going to change our text orientation to justify. So I'm going to scroll down here. I'm going to select that. Next, we're going to come over here to sizing because we need to adjust our width. So we're going to set this to 73. And then for our tablet and smartphone, we're going to set this to 100. So let's just take a look here on the changes. So this is fine at 100 and on the phone, it's fine at 100. Okay, so that's looking great so far. The next thing we're going to do now is to go to our spacing and add some margins. So I'm going to click here on spacing. So for our top margin, we're going to set this to 2.5 VW. 
So this is the same value for the bottom. So I'm just going to add, I'm going to click on this chain to add the same value both to the top and the bottom. And then I'm going to click here on my little icon to add my tablet values. And for this, I'm going to add 50 pixels both to the top and the bottom. And that's going to be the same for the phone as well. Great. So I'm going to go back over here to my desktop tab, click on save. Now we're going, we're going to add a button onto our second column here. So I'm going to click this plus button and search for my button module. I'm going to select it. So over here, we're just going to say, hell yes. So what we're going to do now is to stylize this button because right now it's pretty basic. So we're going to come over here to design, click on button. Now, in order for us to stylize this button, we need to make sure that we uh, say yes to use custom styles for button. So I'm going to activate that. And then we're going to start off with adding our button text size. So I'm just going to scroll here. And in fact, it's right here. I'm going to add 1.2 of VW to that. And then I'm also going to come over here and add my values for my tablet and my phone. So I'm going to click on the tablet tab. And then over here, I'm going to set this to 14 pixels. And that's going to be the same for my phone. So for the button text color, we're going to set this to white. And then over here, we're going to add a gradient for our button. So I'm going to click this plus button and add my first color. So this color here is just going to be a normal hexadecimal value. So I'm going to paste it like that. But the second color is going to be an RGBA. So I'm going to click here on my second color, drag the slider down a little bit, and then paste my values between the brackets, just like that. And then for my gradient direction, I'm going to set this to 78. Right, so we're going to scroll down here until we get to button border width. So we don't need a width for this. So I'm going to set this to zero. And for our button border radius, we're going to set this to 30. And for our letter spacing, we're going to set this to minus one. Now let's um, work on our font weight. So right now it's a bit too thin. Uh, let's make it ultra bold. So I'm going to come over here on regular, set it to ultra bold. And I think this looks better in uppercase. So let's add our font style to uppercase. But of course, you can always choose not to have uppercase if that works for you. So for this example, we're just going to set it to uppercase. Now let's head over here to spacing. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add a top and bottom padding of 10 pixels. I'm just going to add it there, activate my chain. So now we can see we've added some space um, around the text on the top and the bottom. And then for the left and right padding, we're going to set this to 40 pixels. Again, I'm going to activate my chain. And now we can see we have some nice breathing space around our text. Okay, so now let's go to our box shadow. I'm going to select my uh, style and my blur strength. We're going to set this to 40 and then we're going to save. So pretty much this is our design. It's looking really nice. Now it's time to add our second section. So I'm going to click here on this plus button, click on regular. I'm just going to close this for now. And then we're going to go into the section settings. Click on design spacing. And what we're going to do here is we're going to add a top and bottom padding of 100 pixels. So I'm going to add it here and activate my chain so, much, so that my value is added both to the top and the bottom and then save. And then over here, we're going to add two columns. So I'm going to select my column structure. I'm going to close this for now and then we're going to go into the row settings. So we're going to start here with column one background color and we're going to set this to white. And we're going to do the same for column two background color. Again, we're going to set this to white. So on column two, we're going to add the, the hover color. So I'm going to click here on this arrow, click on the hover tab, and then I'm going to change my color to, to this color here. And then we're going to click here on our gradient tab and add our gradient colors. So I'm going to click this plus button, add my first color. So my first color is going to be an RGBA value. So I'm just going to drag the slider down a little bit until I see my RGBA values. And then I'm going to paste my value between the brackets. And as I mentioned before, if you want to use the same values as I'm using in this tutorial, I will leave a link in the show notes below to the post, which will have all these settings. Right. So let's add our second color. I'm going to paste it here. And then I'm going to add my start position. So at the moment it's set to zero, but we want this to start at 20%. Okay. Next, we're going to come over here to design sizing. So for the row, we're going to use our custom width. And just like, just like what we did before, we're going to set this to 2000 pixels. And then we're going to click on use gutter width and set this to one as well. Next, we're going to come over here to spacing and add our padding and our margins. So I'm going to start with my top padding. 
So I'm going to set this to zero, both to the top and the bottom. And then over here for column one padding, we're going to set this to 6VW. And this needs to go to the top and the bottom. So I've activated the chain. I'm going to add my left and right, and it's going to be 5VW. Again, it's going to be the same value both for the left and the right. And then I might as well add my tablet and my phone sizes. So over here, I'm going to add 120 pixels for the tablet and phone. Activate my chain. And then for the left and right, this is going to be 80 pixels. And then for the phone, the only thing we need to change here is 50 pixels for the left and the right. And then click back here on my desktop tab. Right, so what I'm going to do next is to come over here to my box shadow, choose my style. And then for the box uh, shadow blur strength, I'm going to set this to 100 pixels and the spread strength to minus 10. Let's head over here to the advanced tab and add our transitions. We're going to set this to 1100 and then we're going to save. So you may have noticed that the values that we're adding were pretty much the opposite of what we did here on the top. So what we're going to do now is to copy our text modules here and add them onto the first column. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to hold down my command key to use multi-select. So I'm going to click here on the first text that I need to um, add. And then I'm going to click on the second text and then I might as well select the button. So now that everything is all selected, I'm going to go ahead and copy by hitting command C because I'm on a Mac. If you're on a PC, it's control C. And then we're going to come over here and do a control V if you're on a PC or command V if you're on a Mac. Okay, so now you can see all my content has been added successfully. And then what you can do here, you can also do some inline editing and just change this to moving mountains overnight. Next, we're going to change the button gradient. So we're going to come over here to our button module settings, click on design, click on button, and then we're going to change our gradient colors. So I'm going to start off with my first color here. I'm going to replace this, come to my second color. I'm going to replace that. And then for my gradient direction, this time we're going to set it to 39 degrees and then we're going to save. Now to make things easier for us, we're going to clone this or we're just going to copy this image here and paste it on the bottom here. And then all we have to do now is to go in and change the image. So I'm going to click here on my module settings and add this second image upload an image and now we've changed that image. So this image here now goes with this text. So what we need to do now is to change our gradients. So I'm going to click here on the background. So I'm going to start off with adding my first color. Now this color is going to be an RGBA value. So I'm just going to come over here and paste it between the brackets, just like that. Add my second color. Again, I'm going to paste it between the brackets and then my end position is fine at 57%. So the only thing we need to do here is to change our gradient type from radial to linear. Now, the moment of truth, let's test and see if our harvest dates are working. So I'm going to go ahead now and save. I'm also going to save the page. And then we're going to exit the visual builder. Right, so let's see if our harvest dates are working. So I'm going to start with the first image here. And you can see as I'm hovering over the image, this is working. And let's try the second image as well. So we can see here as I'm hovering. It's nice and beautiful. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions regarding these tutorials, please leave your questions in the comments box below and I'll do my best to respond to them. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.